Hi folks, Paul here, and I'm ready to reveal my next big project, which is uh, remarkably similar to my previous projects, actually. Uh, it's building a range extender battery for my Nissan Leaf, and mostly what I'm doing is drawing upon everything I've learnt from my Powerwall building experiences. Um, so I'm, once again, I'm dealing with recycled laptop batteries, putting them in 3D printed battery holders and wiring them all up with control circuitry and relays and so on. So if you are um, one of my Powerwall viewers, you may actually still find this quite interesting, even though uh, rather than dealing with 24 or 48 volts, I will be dealing with packs that are 96 cells or groups in series for a maximum voltage of around 400 volts. Whew, it's a bit freaky and it's one of the things that has slowed this process down is just getting my head around that and trying to work out ways of building this without um, blowing myself up. The, the general plan of what I'm doing is almost an exact copy of what YouTuber Leaf Xpack did a couple of years ago. I'll be making an extension cord for the main power bus that plugs into the battery. So I'll unplug the, the main power cord from the car, plug this in, if you imagine that chopped off and made a little extension cord, plug this in, this will have um, extra wires running off to my secondary battery, then I'll plug the car main wires into this, this end, uh, and then I'll do the same for the control wires, and then I'll run the control wires off to my fuses and relays. What that means is that I will not need to open the battery, pull the battery out, do anything to the primary battery. There's a frightening video on YouTube, I'll link it here, of somebody who did a secondary battery like this and what they did was drill a hole in the primary battery and feed a whole bunch of wires into wire the secondary battery in parallel with the existing battery. And then eventually water got in through that hole and the whole car burned down. I'm not drilling holes in the primary battery, I'm not messing with primary battery at all, I'm just plugging into it. Uh, so my plan will hopefully avoid burning the car. Um, the other thing that my plan will hopefully avoid is blowing the pre-charge resistor inside the battery, which is what Leaf Expat managed to do. His system was a little bit simpler than what I'm doing and he would turn the secondary battery relays off, off and on by hand and I'm going to instead use the um, car's control lines to control my relays. And I'm using another set of um, relays from an old uh, 2012 Nissan Leaf. So these, this is exactly the unit that's inside the primary battery. I'm going to be using another set um, in my battery and the control wires that control those fuses will also control my fuses. So that means that the secondary battery and primary battery will both turn their relays on and off at the same moment always. At least that's the vision. And uh, so I've got a whole bunch of welding wire. I've got some big ass fuse holders. Um, I've been collecting lots of pretty good cells um, that have quite low internal resistance. So those are good. Got a whole bunch of those. I have and one of the things that's taken a long time is I've 3D printed some compatible um, B, this is a B24 plug and socket. Um, this is a, um, a real one uh, that plugs into the battery. And so I used that 
um, those are really expensive and the, the, the other side of it is even more expensive because of people like me buying up all the crashed Nissan Leaf batteries. Um, so I have 3D printed uh, compatible versions that work quite nicely and this one works quite nicely. Um, so I'm building up that, so that will plug in down here. Control, control wires will run back to my battery. This is the test battery that I'm about to build up. When it is wired up, so at the moment there's no connections, but when it is wired up, it'll be 400 volts um, fully charged, about 350 nominally. Uh, both of those numbers are very high <laughs> and a bit scary. So when I'm actually building these up, I'll build them up in sections with um, disconnects uh, at least every 100 volts, which is still a hell of a lot. Um, this is going to be two kilowatt hours. I've measured under the boot of the car, there's space in under here, under here for 10 of these so I can fit roughly 10 kilowatt hours of recycled batteries um, in under the boot. There are other people who have done this whole secondary battery thing and the best example of this that I know of is a YouTuber Power Electronics blog. He's started up a company called Muxan which is well worth checking out because they are doing secondary batteries that are either half as big or as big as the primary battery. There are a few parts of this project that I'm slightly out of my depth on and definitely working with 400 volts is out of my depth. Uh, so if you have any advice other than don't do it because I'm doing it. Um, if you have any useful advice uh, that would be very happily received leave it in the comments below if you're interested in doing a similar thing or have done a similar thing let me know um i'm all ears thanks for watching and i will keep you posted i'll be doing videos of each step along the way um i think i'm going to call this the project my power boot um in new zealand the the trunk is called a boot uh, so it's going to be the power boot. Let me know what you think and I'll catch you next time. Cheers.